Hi, this is the Aqua Drop Primary Color Set by Schmincke. These professional watercolors are pigment based and light fast. They are not like dye based products that fade, such as Ecoline or PH Martin's Radiant brand. These have a surprisingly high pigment load for a liquid and come in a durable, leak proof plastic dropper bottle. For a long time, PH Martin's Hydrus brand was one of the only options for liquid pigment based watercolor. But I've had some issues with Hydrus, including being difficult to rewet, some colors having odd textures, and permanent sediment clumping in their leaky glass bottles. These Aqua Drop colors appear to be a much smoother consistency and are easier to use in markers and pens. I had hoped that these would also be good directly from the dropper, but found that they are just a bit too thick and saturated. Direct drops ended up being a blob that wouldn't flow or spread out on wet paper. It also felt a bit wasteful of the high pigment load. This set has a typo on the box saying plus liner, which is their new empty marker, but it is not actually part of this set. I did buy a few liners separately though, and we'll test them out later in the video. First, I'll show you how these work as a typical watercolor, which you can use in a palette with a brush. After that, I'm going to dive into what I feel is the real selling point of liquid watercolors, unique applications, such as being able to use them in markers, technical pens, and water brushes. It's also possible to use these for airbrushing or in spray bottles. These are a bit too thick for using directly from the bottle with a brush. It's okay when applied sparingly with a marker or pen, but for normal painting, I think it's better to use a palette and mix in a bit of water into it before applying it to paper. Just how much to dilute these for wet on wet painting is a bit of a learning curve, since these disperse differently than their pan watercolors. These aqua drop liquids are vegan. They do not contain oxcall, which is used as a flow additive in their professional watercolor tubes or pans. When testing these with salt, I noticed a difference in the texture reaction compared to most watercolors. The pigment adheres to the salt, leaving a mark under each grain instead of the salt cleanly pushing away the pigment. This is good to know if you're an artist who likes to use salt for texture in your paintings, but I also like to test my paints in this way to help clearly point out unique characteristics. For example, the paints that have multi-pigment mixtures, salt can quickly identify if a paint is capable of color separation in extremely wet washes or by intentionally causing backgrounds or blooms. The white in the set did not have a reaction to salt, which is common in colors containing heavier pigment particles. For some reason, this was the only bottle that does not include a pigment code. When used full strength, it has a gel-like consistency. It goes down streaky and becomes less opaque as it dries. The white cannot be used in empty markers or even water brushes because it's too thick and will clog them. When I mixed it in with other colors, it gave a milky, semi-opaque look. Because this white is not fully opaque, it is not really a replacement for my white gouache or gel pens. These re-wet well if they have dried on your palette, though by rehydrating them you're likely to dilute them a bit. Unlike tube paints, you can add a thin drop onto a palette or even onto the lid of your existing travel set and it won't chip off once dry. I mention this because these bottles can be very clunky and not well suited for travel, but like most watercolor, it can be used from dry. The magenta and lemon yellow do not make a very intense orange. The mixtures lean more towards red to peach. Still, there's quite a lot of color mixing potential here for an overall cool color selection. If you're looking for a warmer color selection, they also offer a lot of other colors available individually. I'll put a link to them in the description section below. The Aqua Drop Liner is an empty marker that you can unscrew to fill with about 50 drops of liquid watercolor. It's not too much of the bottle, only about two dropperfuls. Schmincke has said that the felt marker tips will be available separately as well, so even if the tip wore out, it is a really long-term refillable marker. It's nice to have the ability to create a custom color marker that isn't just disposed of once it starts to run dry. 
These liquids are a bit thick, like cream, not quite ready for calligraphy or line work. So if you fill a technical pen or load a dip pen, be sure to add a drop or two of water to help your lines flow across the paper. Unlike common dye-based markers suspended in water or alcohol, pigment-based markers will not blend as easily. This primary mixing set has very staining colors, meaning once they are on the paper, it's really hard to move them around or erase them. You can blend them a little if you work on damp paper, but they almost instantly stain on dry paper. So much so that I decided to try using these colors in technical pens as if they were waterproof fine liners. This did not end up working out perfectly as they are really just water resistant. With very careful dry layers without a lot of brush movement, it's possible not to destroy the lines. I ended up doing a lot of tedious painting around the lines and some off screen blotting with a sponge to absorb wayward ink when that line work started to bleed. If I could do it over, I would definitely wait to do the lines last after painting. This quick piece inspired by an old Art Nouveau painting was a fun way to play with these watercolors in markers, technical pens, and water brushes. It was definitely a challenge working with the magenta, yellow, and blue markers in layers to create secondary colors. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these products, and if you have a creative idea for using these, let me know in the comments below, and as always, I appreciate your feedback.
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.